Morning, y'all. I'm home again. At last. So nice to be home. Back to coffee time. So on today's daily vlog, I'm gonna do a swing. This swing here, this young man sent me this swing via Instagram, told me that he hits low heels, cuts as well, so we're gonna deal with that. Now if you don't follow me on Instagram, at Crossfield Mark, if you wanna try and get on the daily vlogs, that's where you follow me, send it to me as a message, that's where I can pick them off for you, and see if you can get your chance of getting your swing looked at on the daily vlogs. So let's take a look at today's golf swing. He complains actually of hitting low shots out the heel, so striking it heel and low on the club, and then big cuts. And what we see from this action is we do see a bit of a contradiction on the way back. I wanna try and sort out his club path, so the way, the direction he swings the club on the backswing, and also tie that in a little bit with his hand direction and where he hinges his hands. I want to try and get rid of what we'd call this big laid off action at the top of the backswing. And as soon as he pulls down, you see the standing up of the shaft. Even though it's not the biggest standing up by any means, I mean, he could still hit draws from this position. I just don't like the contradiction we have between back and down. I'd like to try and get them a little bit more in sync and see if that improves his club path so for directions rather than the big suffering from the big cuts and also helps him with his strike. Certainly as well as a younger player like this as well, sometimes a bit of swing building it can be slightly different to swing fixes because obviously this player is going to maybe have a bit more time to practice and make a bigger change than a guy who's working full time with a family who gets to play once a month, twice a month, those kind of things. Not all lessons are the same for all people. But let's see if we can get those contradictions out of his backswing. So, the first fix we're going to do, thinking about this backswing. We need him to set better on the backswing so he gets out of sync with how he sets his wrists. He basically, as he sets, he'll boot, he adds a lot of extension in this lead wrist, of cupping, which that then in turn adds lots of loft to the face. He then wants to angle his wrist a lot this way and stretch out here, then he goes extending wrist and what you call flat, so laying it like down to the ground more, so they can go up. So look, I'm just gonna put this ball in my normal position I would hit a shot from, and as I take the club back, I'm gonna try and set the wrist so the butt end of this club points down towards that ball, basically. And if anything, it can even point somewhere, even in between the ball and your foot, while at the same time, trying to keep lead wrist. Nice and flat with lead arm. Now you can do this in another way, let me show you. I've got a brush now, indoors. So I'm gonna stand up against one of my cabinets with the brush end touching the cabinet. Take my golf grip with the rest of the pole point right out towards my left side. Now as I make that backswing, I'm gonna try and get the other end of the pole to point somewhere down near the, the cabinet is, even inside it. That's gonna make you feel like you're setting those wrists on a very different angle on the way back. And you can also use the head of the brush. It's always good when you do these drills to do what you do as well as what you should do. Sometimes it's not about feeling what's right, it's about what's feeling different. So you need to identify what you do, what that feels like in comparison to what the other movement feels like. Just feeling the other movement is often not good enough. I always get my students to show me how I want them to do it, and then I say, how do you do it now? Because that shows me that they understand there's a distinct change, a, di uh, a distinct feeling, a, di a difference in what they're trying to achieve. So the way you would go back now, you would go back here, then you would turn the end of the brush up to the sky as you sit back and hit kind of the, the covered somewhere at the top here. So I want you feeling like that. End of the stick stays down, put inside the cupboard or to the cupboard where your brush started. Then at the same time, feel like the head is turning more this way as you set, not this way, and then with this laid off kind of backswing action. I'll be honest with you, you can do this at a range and it shots, it's harder. Doing it indoors, drilling it like this, five minutes each day, 10 minutes each day, often has a much bigger effect than just going and whacking balls. Because when you go and whack balls, what happens is you just resort to whatever feels best. Right, I've got to go to Torquay Golf Club, pick up a few bits. Right at Torquay, 
there are my bits. So the next drill I want you to do, just get like a seven iron, like a medium iron, seven, eight iron. And I want you to hit a few shots out there with a preset wrist hinge and angle. So literally just put your hands, kind of hinge the club back so it's parallel with your feet line and your hands are kind of in line with the golf ball still. So basically you're just pre-setting your wrist hinge, but I want you to make sure that your lead wrist flattens off with your lead arm. That in turn, when you do this, is gonna make the club feel like it wants to turn down to the ground a bit more. So take your set up, normal grip, get the club along your feet line, parallel to your ball type line, just flatten the left wrist, turning that club slightly down to the ground, and then just do a tiny shoulder turn back and through, and hit a few shots that way. See if you can connect. As you do this, feel how different it feels on the way down. Feel how different it feels in relationship to you going back and down, which feels like a very similar angle. So you're not actually doing anything. You're pre-sitting everything and just turning, turning through. You see, I'm only hitting these, what, like 100 yards. When I'm comfortable with the strike, I'm going to build the speed back up. I might make a few fuller swings doing this. Again, pre-set, flatten lead wrist with lead arm. We'll do a full back swing. All follow through, that one should turn, yeah, a fraction left for me, not loads. That's getting up to the 146 carry. So it's a fuller shot. Now I'm not trying to hit great shots doing this, I would like to make some kind of contact. That last one was a bit toey, because obviously you're starting from quite a random position. It's the feeling of hitting balls with that wrist set this way, opposed to extending your lead wrist and then laying that shaft down, feeling more that you're standing it up on the way back and flattening the wrist and hitting shots. That's what you've got to dial into with this drill. And again, this drill, you can kind of do this at home, just grab the club halfway down the handle so you don't hit any light fittings, flatten the lead wrist, and just do a few demos, feeling that set. Again, you notice I'm not really hitting full shots. If you're building a feeling, you do need to take the time to build. You need to do the practice off course. You need to do the practice away and the thinking about what you're doing away from hitting shots as well as then introducing a ball. And often I'll find with students that mixture of making sure they are thinking enough off course is what gets them back onto the course quicker, not resorting back to their old kind of ways and going forwards with a change. Bleed it in, preset, flatten lead wrist, hit a few pitches out there in front of you. This will make a massive difference. There we go, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. Let me know if those drills work for you or not, if they make sense, post comments down below. If it's something you've kind of struggled on, working on or worked on, and this might help you, I would love to hear. We better pick a winner for the wedge. Anyone who remembers the wedge, the 26, 2.5 wedge I stamped up on the Titus Tour truck last week. The winner has come in. Ed has sent me uh, his name. I'm gonna put his name up kind of around here now because I can't actually pronounced that I've emailed him as well for his details so well done this wedge is coming to you as soon as you send me your details so thanks to everyone who donated to Ed's charity and got involved that was brilliant and me and Ed and everyone and his son kind of thank you for that see you all tomorrow I'm off to boys football tonight football training it's cold it's wet and it's windy it's the UK coming into the winter see you all tomorrow <laughs>